Mm -hmm. Oh, I should probably brush my hair. Nah, I think this is good. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today is Financial Friday, so we're going to talk all about my FPU experience on week number six. So week number six is the role of insurance. That is what the lesson is called. Actually, I will tell you this first off. This is probably my favorite lesson that has happened so far because I really feel like I thought I had my stuff together with insurance, but now after watching it and having it all explained to me properly, I don't have it all together. So I feel like there's like an action plan. Like I have something to do, something tangible that I can do this week to contact my insurance broker and to talk to him about other options or to up certain things or lower certain things or add certain policies and things like that. So I'm actually really excited that this lesson happened because I really feel like this week is the first week that I've actually had something to do. And the reason that I say that is maybe I should back up. Hold on, let's back up a little bit. Let me introduce myself in case you guys don't know me. My name is Emily. I am a 36 year old single individual. I am currently on baby step 3B, which means that I'm saving 20% for a down payment on a home. Um, that has already been achieved, but I'm looking for homes right now, so I'm still just kind of stockpiling cash and putting it into that home fund. Um, as soon as I buy the home, I will be on to baby step four, five, and six, um, which all of you know will be like 15% of income into retirement, pay off the house early, and kids uh, funding kids college, which I don't have to do because I don't have any kids. So anyway, let's get back into what I was saying before. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm sorry. I filmed a couple videos already today. I'm a little delirious. So getting back to insurance. Um, I have like a ton of notes this week because there's so much that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So um, we talked a lot about health insurance, auto insurance, um, long-term care, disability insurance, like tons of different things. But um, I did share this with my FPU classes. I have life insurance on myself, which is kind of odd considering no one is actually depending on my income. So usually when someone depends on your income, that's when you get, you know, life insurance. Um, I got life insurance at 28 years old and at 29, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism, which is thyroid disease. There's a hypo and a hyper. This disease is non-life threatening, but I have to live with it and there's some things that I can do to change it slightly, um, but it never really goes away. I'm not to the point where I'm uninsurable, but I'm really glad I got the premium that I did when I did. Um, I think my premium is about $125 a year and I'm on a 40 year term with that, which is great because um, no one's counting on that money, but it would cover like burial costs or something like that if that were to happen, um, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff too. So um, I just wanted to make sure that my debts would be paid at age 28 um, and then a whole bunch more too. And my brother's the beneficiary um, if for some reason he is no longer living. My nephew would be the second beneficiary out of that. So. Anyway, um, but that's something I shared with the class that I was really glad that I got. I mean, it's not a life-threatening illness or disease or terminal problem, um, but it definitely would make my premium a lot higher. So very thankful that I got that. And at some point I will probably have to re-up my insurance, but I'm gonna wait until that 40 year mark happens. So I'm pretty good on the health insurance. I'm pretty good on the life insurance front. Um, as for health insurance, um, I have like an action plan of some things I need to do. So I'm currently at my current employer. We have an HSA option, which I haven't contributed anything to the HSA. So I need to figure out how to do that. And I'm gonna contact my old like HSA accounting place that did it for my previous employer and see if I can just get into their program. Cause I already have like a, like an HSA credit card, debit card thing. So maybe I can just like piggy back off of that and do it from there. But again, I just need to look into it. As for um, discussions with my insurance agent, I want to talk to him about like auto policy changes and some things like that, as well as long-term disability. I, you know, what's funny is I've never actually thought of long-term disability before. I just thought that I would be me and I wouldn't have an issue. And I think a lot of people think that way. And um, Dave said something really interesting that 30% of people in North America at some point deal with either a short-term or a long-term disability. That's pretty astonishing. So 
I want to talk to my insurance broker about long-term disability and see what he has to offer. Um, my current employer does not offer long-term disability insurance, so I can't get it through him. I feel like that's really important to look into to see because if I'm disabled, there's nothing that I can do. Um, if I can't work, I can't earn an income. Um, Short-term disability, I'm not too worried about because I do have my six months of emergency funds saved, so I could go potentially, you know, six months without having an income at all, um, and that's based on numbers that I've already figured out for myself. So I feel like at that point I could kind of self-insure a little bit, um, and then I could really pare down my lifestyle as well. So I'm not too concerned about the short-term disability, and even Dave in the video said don't really worry about the short-term disability as long as you have your three to six months of emergency fund. Um, if you don't, then that's a whole nother bag of beans, but I'm just telling you from my perspective how I interpret the class. Also, we talked about long-term health care coverage. Um, you know, if you're over 60, you should get it. Um, I have talked to my parents several times about it, and um, we have, well not we, they have decided not to insure themselves. Um, they are what you call self-insured, so they can absorb the cost of one or both of them being in an assisted living facility or in a nursing home or having in-home care for a length amount of time. All four of us, when I mean four of us, I mean my mom, my dad, myself, and my brother are all comfortable with that. So um, it's just something that you would wanna have a discussion with your parents about because the thing is, is that I'm gonna be the one or my brother's gonna be the one to see those things through as well. We just all need to be on the same page. And if you guys watched my vlogs um, from this past December, my Vlogmas vlogs while I was in Florida, one of the vlogs is me talking about having the death talk, um, and we are going to be definitely making it an annual thing, and we're going to just talk about what our wishes are and things like that, just to make sure we're all on the same page, that there's no surprises, and if one of us pass away, we can just go grab the information from the safety deposit box and run with it, because we want to make sure that everyone's wishes are what they want, because it's a high stress, high emotion time, and the less choices that we can make that are left on the earth, the better, because it's just gonna make our lives so much easier. So those are my takeaways from week number six about all insurance. Um, like I said before, this is probably my favorite lesson so far just because I actually have some really cool things to do and really I wanna start learning a lot more about certain insurances that I should have and really just discussing it with my insurance broker. Also, if you're taking the class and you haven't gone through week six yet, I'm just letting you know to grab some tissues, because you might need it at the end, I'm just saying. So, just be aware. <laughs> anyway, well that's gonna be it for me. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, no matter where you are. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like Financial Fridays. Like I've said in previous Financial Peace University videos, I will be reviewing every single week until it is over. There are nine total weeks, so I'm almost halfway done with this, and then every Friday from there on, I will have other fun financial things to chat about with you guys. So anyway, I am gonna let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching today. Feel free to subscribe and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye guys!